Right, I think um, we're probably quite close, so we will jump in. So welcome everybody to today's Autodesk Community Conversation. My name's Jonathan. I'm a little bit new around here, but well known, I think, within the community. And today's um, Community Conversation is one of our series of conversations from, uh, and it's going to be Revit Hints and Hacks. And today is all about design options with flexibility. So as I said, welcome to the community conversation. This is my first one hosting, and I just want to give a little bit of insight as to what the conversations are. Um, so there, there are a series of events that we have that allow speakers from around the world um, and from the Autodesk community to showcase the skills and talents that they have. And it's all about sharing the knowledge and connections, so sharing these critical insights that these people have. Um, and it's hosted by the community team. So if we can just pop to the next slide. So I guess it wouldn't be an Autodesk event if we didn't have a safe harbor statement. So um, the, the usual thing is that we may, or Danae may discuss certain aspects that have uh, forward looking statements. Today's speaker, whom some of you probably already know, um, I first met you, Danae, at Autodesk University in New Orleans. and. Uh, since then, I used to think that I knew Revit, and then I met you, and then I realised that I don't quite know Revit as well as I thought I did. So I want to um, big up for the the uh, the legend that is Tania, who's going to present some uh, amazing stuff today. So over to you, Tania. Okay, <clears throat> had to get a cough out. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, my name is Dottie Tabor Hansen. I am a senior CAD BIM analysis for Nelson Worldwide. I've been at this job for since August. How many months is that? But I've been doing Revit for a long time. I actually live in my first Revit project, um, and we've been here for almost 18 years. So and it took a couple of years to design it too. But um, Revit is is what I enjoy the most. I call what I do. Um, Revit CSI or Revit Forensics, um, I get in there and fix things, um, find out what people did. And sometimes it's a little bit squirrely how I can try to figure out how they got there. Um, but that's part of what I enjoy about it. And I love my job. I love where I'm working. I'm in the DTS group uh, under IT here. And uh, today uh, is one of the requested titles um i had several things i asked everybody to give me um an idea about what you would like for me to present for you uh and last month was uh kurt walls and we had a great session on that and today is design options and then i think next month is also a request so i'm looking for more requests if there's something you would like for me to cover i ain't scared i'll dive into anything so uh just uh, let us know in in the chat and stuff if there's some uh, topic that you would like to see covered here, because I'm willing to do anything. Okay, so today's session on design options, we're going to cover from uh, use some definition examples, make sure we're all on the same uh, wavelength when we're talking about them, how to set them up, uh, how to add things to them, how to do some annotation, how to do some scaling or scheduling, and um, how to manage uh, the options and the option sets. And then there was just some gotchas that I would find that I wanted to go over things, just some design option notes that I wanted to cover that didn't seem to fall into these things completely, but I wanted to make sure to cover those. So with that, let's get started. Okay. Definitions, the main model. Well, this is everything that's not in the design option. When you start, you've got your main model um, and that, that's, then you would move things into design options and what things you don't move in design options remain in what is called the main model. A design option is where you can set up the ability to have several designs for one area. It could be a kitchen options. Uh, they may have bathroom design options. Uh, porch design options, um, conference room uh, setups, office layouts, anything that you want to do. When the boss comes in and goes, what if we, there's your cue that you may want to set up design options because you know you may have to go back to what you've got. So that's the first clue on, I need to set up a design option. What if we 
And that we is you and the mouse in his pocket is the one in your hand. So yeah, oh, we're going off. So yeah, that's when you want to look at design options is if it's the, what if we do this? What if we do that instead? So that's your first clue for that. An option set is a collection of options for the one space. Um, generally, the, the set is named for the area that you're going to be in, and your option set, uh, your options under that can also have names to give you an idea about what that option is for each set. Um, like I said, it should be various kitchen layouts, entry areas of the house, or a building, whatever. But uh, an option set is the collective of the options for the area. An option is a subset of the option set, and this is where you would do the what if we do this instead. So you get your first slit set, and the what if we do this instead, your second set, and then you can have as many options under an option set as you need to. Um, so I, here's an example. Um, on the interway, do you want a porch or a stoop? The primary. <laughs> There must always be a primary option in an option set because you can go into a view and tell it you want to show me this option or show me this option, you know, in the, this view. Well, the primary is one that's going to be visible in all the views that you don't tell it to show something else. So it is what, and you can change your primary. When you're going through there, you can change primary. Um, but it will show up with no other in the view with no other options have been designated. That's your primary one. Okay, setting up an option set. Um, design options can be found on the Manage tab or else on the bottom of the screen. So let's pop over to Revit. And if I go to the Manage tab, I can find my design options here. But they're always available here on the bottom of the screen. And I can either get here or here, whichever way you want to do. So uh, you can either bring these up uh, from up here or by hitting design options or from down on the bottom. And either one of these will bring up the dialog box. So let's go ahead and do that. And let me bring this on up here a little bit. He likes to hang out in the corner. So it says you're now editing the main model. So you can, it says now editing the main model, you have edits and option sets and options. And all these are going to be grayed out until you get something started. Um, in the design options style box, now editing, oh, always is the main model. And you can change it to one of the option sets when you're editing once you get those sets in there. And the edit selections only shows if an option has been created and then selected. So let's get, go on with. Uh, under the option sets, um, you have new, rename, accept, primary, delete of an option set. And starting an option set using the new button. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do several options in here. So let's get a new set. It automatically comes in and has one option under it. Yeah. And a second option can be used by putting a new option down here. See, once I have this option in here, then I can add more options to it down there. So let's go ahead and add at least one more. So give me a new one. Uh, let's give, let's go with three. So now I've got an option and I have three, an option set and three options underneath it at this point. It's easy so far. Um, after adding an, one option set and, and three options under here, I, you can then see the edit selected can be set up and you can set it to a particular option. So now under here, under edit selected, I can pick on one of these and say edit selected and you can see it change right here. When you're editing an option, your main, uh, your main, uh, model will gray out. I can also change this. You know, and I can close this while I'm editing options. Uh, once editing is complete, you can do the finish editing. 
nobody ever goes back to that. I'm going to show you a quicker way to do that. I don't want to bring up a dialog box to do that. Another way of finishing editing is just to change either main model or main model. So you don't have to go back and hit that finish editing. So when I'm over in Revit, I can come here and change this to go back to main model and I'm back in the main model. I can also change it from here. And so let's go to option two. Same thing from up here. I can go to any of the other options. Notice difference in the primary. I see the annotation because it's related to the main model. Main model will definitely show up better with the, uh, everything shows up as with the primary, whichever one is primary. So the annotation stuff will show up with it. You have to make it show up with the others by copying it over or something. So if I go back to the main model, see I'm, I'm done editing those sets. Now, so you can edit the primary and then you can close it. I'll just do this one. Did I go backwards? I did go backwards. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So setting them up is pretty easy. Um, and then once the option sets have been named and the number of options have been added, it's time to add, start adding elements to these options. So let's go back and let's name some of these. I'm going to work with the laundry and half bath area. I'm going to make three different options for that. Um, <coughs> pardon me. And to do this, I just need to bring this up here. And you can, here where you come in and you want to, this is your option set. So you can rename it to the laundry and bath. My primary one, this, I'm gonna be, if I'm going to be working in this area, right now we've got a pass through. So I'm going to come down here and rename it. So now I can rename this once I've picked on this. I can rename it here. And I can come up, wait a minute, I just renamed, yeah, the main one. And maybe a second one, um, rename it to separate rooms. So I'm like separate rooms out of them where <coughs> right now it's got the pastor going through it. And rename this one to uh, switch them. For example, so I can go in there and I can name these all I want to and whatever I want to have. And you want to keep it something based on what you're doing so you know what you're going towards when you're going towards it. I want to make sure I'm in the one that's separating rooms or this or that, the other when you're going to them. So I'm going to go ahead and close this one. No. And go to here where I have already set up another one. Say I'm going to work in bedrooms and I've got closets, no closets, so that I got separate areas I'm gonna be, I could be working with. Uh, so you can have as many design options, sets, and as many options as you want underneath each one of them. But I decided just to demonstrate just two different ones in here. <coughs> so I'm gonna start working with moving some things into the design options. I'm gonna start this by giving you a warning. <laughs> Hosted elements cannot be <clears throat> added to an option. You have to add the host elements and the, ho the host edit, host <clears throat> hosted elements and the host element to get the hosted element into an option. This would include doors and windows, for example. And let me show you an example of that by going in here to the. <clears throat> so I can just tell it I want the, this one and say edit selected. So I'm going to be in the primary one. And to put things into um, here, I don't, okay, wait, I got to go back. I want to be in the main model. If I want to move these to my uh, sets, I'm not going to go to my set. I got to go here to the main model so I can select them. You can't select things unless you're in, unless they're in the main model at this point. And I want to select this. I'm going to be using this wall. I'm going to be using this wall. I'm going to be doing this door. And I'm going to say, Come right here to this and add to set. I don't want to add it to the bedrooms. I want to make sure I pick the right set. I'm going to move it all three of these. 
And there's the error message. And I did this on purpose. Insert main model hosted. An insert in the main model cannot be hosted in an element design option. And you can see it's highlighted up here. Actually, you see it better when I, yeah. So the select that depends on them being an option if you want to be make them editable. So you've got to be able to go in. And when you add to the set, you can go through the pick here and add to the set. And then bring it up and put it into, I want to put this in the laundry and half bath. Um, and then you can select the options to be added to, that you want the elements added to. I did it on purpose to get an error in there. Um, errors can happen when the selection of a wall ha has other elements hosted to it. And for some reason, it's picking up the door on the side. So we got to investigate that. Um, and it will tell you which one it is. So you can go and look for, it says it's the door, the double door is causing issues. That double door is not even on this wall. And I didn't do this on purpose. I found this in here. So I'm like, well, it's a good thing to find so I can show how to fix the problem here. So the best thing I do here is just cancel. So to fix this problem here, you can do a couple of things. You can use a break on there or, um, let's see, did I mention that? Uh, no, I, mean, I think I mentioned it in the extra stuff. So you can use a break, which comes in very handy on um, on the, um, my computer blinked out on me, I've lost it. Uh, you can use a break for the wall, which comes in handy when you're doing option sets, because sometimes you'll want to break a wall because this part's going to be worked on, this one's not. In this case, though, so instead of going in and breaking a section like right here or something, I'm wondering why this door is even related to it. So I'm just going to go up under um, modify and let's look at uh, the wall join here. Let's flip it so it's stopping this wall at that point and that wall at the other. Now let's see if we can add it to the design option. So we're going to pick this stuff again. I want to get that sink. We're going to invest with the toilet and this door and this wall and this wall and this door and the washer and the dryer. And everything gets highlighted like that. And I, now let's try moving it to <laughs> choose the set, choose the options. Boom. And it's still a problem. Okay. Let's square them off. I'll quit. We're done with that. If this doesn't work this time, I'm not going to mess with it, but joints and stuff, I'm just going to split the wall. <laughs> Add to this, change, set, go. Fine, I'm splitting the wall. <laughs> so now I can just add this part of the wall. And it does clean up well when it's in the primary, but that wall will show the split when it's in the secondary choices. Um, Looks like I got everything selected. But realize this, it shows up in the primary nice and smooth and the secondaries it won't. Um, but once you get your options set set, you can choose a separate primary or whatever, then you're going to accept a primary and the wall is going to move back out anyway. So splitting a wall here doesn't make a whole lot of problems with us. So now if I want to go edit an option, I really don't want to edit the primary because that's the primary. So it's it's set. I don't have to mess with it. So let's go in and let's, excuse me, let's look at uh, the separate room options. And you can see the things that I can touch are the things that were added to the options. And that wall is really split. Maybe I'll pull them on here and make them. Ah, I'm going to let it ride because that's what it wants to act on. Because I don't think I can clean it up here. 
it says allow joints. Yeah, it doesn't want to do it. I'm just going to let it ride. Like I said, with an option set, I'm going to ignore that part of it. <laughs> Pardon me. And make sure that we have the things we set the way we want. Um, so let's get into this option set. This one is the separate rooms. So I'm going to put a door here. And I'm going to delete a door. So you can just delete things right out of the option. And let's just say that's all I need to do to make it a separate room. So I can pull this back to main model. And there's that. But if I go to, and you see the door is still there. If I go to where it's separate rooms, I have this door here. If I go to switch rooms, I'm looking at back at the way it was to begin with, with the primary option. Uh, so selection set in the model now depends on it being in the option edit to edit or in the main model. So if you're in the main model, you can pick on anything. Um, but when you have this down here set to exclude options, when you're in the main model, you're not going to be able to touch any of your design options. Everything that's in the design option is not editable when you're in the main model if as long as you have this exclude option set which is something i highly recommend if you have design options going on because you don't want somebody in the main model to do something with your primary thinking that oh they they want to move that door over here so they may move the door and stuff in the primary when that's not what they what you wanted you wanted to have the door moved in the option for the door being moved <laughs> pardon me um and any element can be added while working a design option because it's automatic part of the option. So let's look at doing that. I want to go to back over here and let's go to where we're switching rooms. Where we're switching rooms, um, then I'm going to put, take these two things. I'm going to move. Okay, come on, select them and move them. And rotate them. And they're going to be set here. Let's go ahead and get these two things out of the way because that looks bad. And move those from here to here. And then delete the, let's see, let's do a CS. Put a door in here. Take that door out and Maybe we'll just move this one over and switch it just to have something different. Um, let me see if I've got. No, oh, that's that one. Um, I was just gonna look and see if I had a different sink or something. No, this one wants to be hosted. Um, if I wanted to change this and add a bathtub, let's just add a bathtub. And we can rearrange this a little bit better. So we have a full bath now. Okay, that's ugly. <laughs> And now, so we've got our three options, and I can go to uh, separate rooms, or I can go back to the pass through. So now I've got three different options set up. Are there any questions coming in about that? Um, we have one question, not quite related to it, but a question from Sam, who is looking to see can you show us how to get the rooms show and schedule in a different design option but what yes yes that's part of the scheduling we're gonna do yes okay. let's just leave it for them so yeah we will we'll cover that in a is it because the two walls are joined uh probably i'm not i'm not going back to play with walls anymore <laughs> move on um yeah <coughs> pardon me <clears throat> okay so now let's start talking about annotating some things um annotation shows up where only in the view it's created in. So to tag dimension or otherwise, uh, it needs to be in a separate view. 
So what we're going to have to do is we're going to create some different views for these. I just went back one. That's how I'm going back one. Nope. You stay there. I want to go here. So let's go back to the main model. And I'm going to add a view and give me a call out. Uh, I might as well go ahead and I hate having doors cut off. Um, where are you? Come down here where I can see you. Okay. So I can go into this view, and this view is probably, it's, the annotation is probably going to be fine. Uh, maybe I want to change the scale. Oh, maybe I want to change the uh, manage. Not not that button, the one beside it. <laughs> Project units. Um, let me go ahead and make it so I understand it better. Uh, square feet. And feet fractional inches. Okay, okay, okay. Now I can get it to the scale I want. Okay. Maybe we want to break this one up to a half inch or let's go just go quarter. Do 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 do. So in here, um, I can do tags. Um, maybe let's go get room tags. Uh, and see those. <clears throat> so now we want to, if we go up here, uh, let's go ahead and duplicate this view. And in here, um, we want to show the separate rooms and tag that one, tag that one. I don't want to have that number. I want it to have, but you see my tags are kind of grayed out because it's not set to view that yet. So to get that where I can view it properly, first and primary connects with the main model. So those showed up fine. So to get to that, you want to set up a view template for the different design options and set the VG overrides for that design option. So here's where you would go and set that. And you can include it with a template or whatever. So, and once you go in there to do, to do the uh, override, then you can go down here and you can set your, this is what you're gonna see, the design options tab, you're gonna go in and you're gonna set your, your option for that view template, okay? And then all you gotta do is just add these things to sheets. So let's go back over here and get some of that done. So let's go to, um, I got a view template that says none. Well, I'm gonna set it to an architectural plan. And then I'm immediately going to, let's see, I'm going to set that. So I've got something that is going through there. And then I'm going to duplicate it for option, this is switch room. <clears throat> so I can go into here and set this one to switch rooms. Did I say switch rooms or did I say, yeah. Okay, so now I've got, I have separate rooms on, on here. My bad, switch rooms. That's why it was, that I wasn't seeing it dark, it was grayed out. So now I've got the set here and now I can do the tagging. Here, here, no. Put this back to 104. Um, and let's go and tag, under annotate tag, uh, room tag, this and this. But maybe I want to change the room name to 
bath and this one to laundry. And when you go in there, you can yeah, change these around all you need to, and then I can duplicate again. Duplicate view. Set this one to separate rooms. This one, okay. I gotta get myself straight here. Let's go into here. That's just switch rooms. I want to duplicate that. And go into design option and set it for separate rooms. And you can go ahead and pick on this one. If I know I wanna have the closet set for the same thing, I can set in the other design option, which I'm not doing. I just created one to have an extra one. And there's where it switched rooms. So now I can tag. Oh, good. You want to be that one. Okay. And then I can tag rooms. Room tag. But in here, I want this one to be spelling is always good. Yeah. Can't type today. There we go. And now I can set that to that. So making sure, let's see, design options separate, separate rooms. Switch rooms. Design option set to switch rooms. Primary. Let's go ahead and at least give it the architectural plan. You could create another one. No, you should be on primary. So in this one, yeah, let's go ahead and create another one. Duplicate. Because I don't want to take a chance on it being swapped out. Design option here will be pass through. I shouldn't call it primary, I should call it pass through. Okay, 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 okay. Rename these and stuff, and then you're ready to go. Um, you can start putting them on sheets and stuff. So let me, <clears throat> I'm checking my time. <clears throat> and then you're, <clears throat> and then you're ready to add them to sheets. So now let's talk about scheduling, and then we're going to add all these to a sheet here in just a little bit. Scheduling can be set to use just one design option. So there's your, how you can get your rooms to show up. Uh, the way you want to them in a schedule is by setting the design option. And what happens when you go into your visibility graphics override in your schedule. There's visibility graphic override and you can edit. And then you can bring it up and you can choose which more than one option for that schedule. Okay, so let's go look at that. Um, No, let's cancel that right here. Let me go ahead and do the schedules. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, <clears throat> go to a view and let's do a schedule and let's do a room schedule. Oh, come on, pick. And we want to have our areas. We want to have our name. Uh, and our number, of course, I didn't put them in right. And let's just start with that. Uh, sorting by number. Okay. 
now I want to go back and look at something. Um, there's a phase of working drawings, so let's make sure that my schedule is set to working drawings. Okay, so in here, no, I don't want learning content. I want working drawings. Now I want it to fill out. There we go. So now this one is for, here is your visibility graphics. So here's where you can set this for whichever one you want. I want this one to be to pass through. I could set it for closets or no closets, whatever. Um, and this way I can compare my uh, bath and laundry with each one. So now that I've got that schedule, Let's go ahead and duplicate that schedule. Uh, da, 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 da. Duplicate view. And I can just change it to a different option. Separate rooms. And then I can duplicate that and make it another one. Duplicate view. Duplicate and make that one to switch rooms and this one is the bath is 30 the laundry is 56 this was switch rooms all right let's go back to make sure i'm on the right one i'm in see well that's why you have to name these things uh, rename. Rename. No, oh, I got it backwards, didn't I? This is switch rooms. No, this is separate rooms. My dyslexia is running rampant this morning. Yeah, this is switching. Rename. Rename. Pass through. So when I'm in switching rooms, this is my laundry, this is my bath. Okay. So let's look at I'm going to close this down. Close this one. And go to okay, yeah, okay. Here's where I've got them all three set up, and I've got all the schedules set up, and the schedules are named. So we've got the pass through, and let's just look at that pass through where the bath is. 30 and laundry 50 and let's look at these switch rooms where the laundry is 30 and the bath is 56. So that's how you, yeah, once you get those things set up, it's just a matter of making sure you have the correct options set for those. Time 42, oh, okay, okay. So that's how you get your schedules done and then all you got to do is just drag them onto a sheet. I should just show you that too. I think I got the sheet set up, yes. So here's my design options where I've just drag them on a sheet. And I've got them set with their view templates the way they need to be. Um, this is the one where I fix the corner of the wall so I don't have the gap in there. Uh, the schedules are set up the way they should be. So here the laundry is 30. The room numbers kept them, swap that. But So you can just drag them onto sheets when you've got, you know, so you, you can compare these. Um, I've seen things like um, a front entry on a house where 
They would even have the 3D view set up with the different options being shown and have them on a sheet. So um, there was a builder I worked with to get his Revit stuff set up and he did the cookie cutter community. They could go in, they could choose, I want this foyer, I want this entry, I want this bathroom. And they could go and set their set of plans and he had them just popping out plans like crazy with design options using design options and doing comparison so that somebody could come in and choose whichever things they wanted. Or when the boss comes up and goes, what if we, and you want to make sure you take care of that. So now I've set up design options. I've shown them side by side so I can do a comparison of them, um, set up scheduling for them. Uh, so now when we start looking at um, managing the options, for the, uh, for the options, the design, you can, your options are new, primary, um, make primary, so you can swap another one to the primary. Uh, you can rename them, you can duplicate them, or you can delete them. So, you know, if you'd like one, but it's going to change a little bit, duplicate it. If you're de that was definitely off the market, delete it. Uh, renaming it to make it more comparable to what it's actually going by, then, yeah, rename it. Um, Managing design options um, for the <clears throat> I'm sorry, option sets for the set. You can do new. You can rename it. You can accept it or you can delete it. If you delete it, it's going to go to primary. Um, but if you and you accept primary, then it's going to delete everything else. So those are your options. And when you do accept primary, so if I accept primary, it's the one that I have primary, which was the uh, pass through. Then it came up and said, you want to switch rooms or I'm going to delete these things because they're no longer used. So the views and stuff that are related just to the option set um, or the options for that set that are not being used, it's going to remove them for you. So you don't have to go back and clean up all that yourself. And then you can delete them. So let's go over and let's accept a primary. So if I decide I want to come through and accept primary. so if I'm in one of these, see this grays out. I can do the things, I can do options when I'm in an option. If I'm in a primary, the only thing I can do for options is create a new one, a new option. But if I'm picking on the option set, then if I come over here to accept primary, accept primary, uh, integrate the selection design option into the model, delete all secondary options and design option set or cancel. Well, why did you hit accept? Okay, I'm going to accept. There's where it's going to delete all those, and boom. There it went. So that's been accepted. That prom that uh, option set is no longer in here, and I'm ready to go with the one that was chosen. I can even delete the sheet for the design options and stuff and move on. Look at our time. Okay. How are we doing? I haven't seen any questions come up. So, okay. Other design option notes. These are the things that I like. Okay, let's just make sure we cover these things. So um, a secondary option elements cannot interact with the main model. Only the primary option can interact with the main model. I mentioned that early on. That's why the pass-through wall stayed the way it was. And the other one was like, forget it. I'm just going to leave a gap for now. Uh, so if you want to move it around and look at the other ones and make sure everything is interacting properly just just set that option to primary occasionally if you want to make sure that it's going to work right if you accept it if you were to set it as primary so you can change around which one is going to be your primary at any time and that covers this problem with uh, interacting with the main model and i like it because it broke the wall because that really drives home the point of what we could talk about interacting with the main model um move any main model elements that need to interact with the options to those options. Um, so if you need to have something interacting with it, making sure it's going to work properly, I could probably have gone and added that broken wall to the options and it might have worked. But if I could just fix that where that door didn't interact with it, you know. Um, so you can just, if, if you come up with an error message that you can't do that, well, then just move that, uh, you don't just, just because I did things the one time, you can go back at any time and add things to the option set as you need them later. So you don't have to do it just when you're setting them up, in other words. Um, dimensions. 
can refer to the main model and anything in a design option set as long as you're in a view that is set for that design option. So you, if you're in the view that is dedicated to doing the documentation where I put the uh, and I had the view template set up for it and stuff, then I can do the annotation, the tags and stuff. You can also do dimensions and everything, anything else that you need uh, to do annotatively as long as you've got that set up for that design option. Um, good thing about rooms here. Rooms added to a design option cannot overlap a room in a main model and vice versa. So that is a real stickler when the question came up about rooms and schedules. Yeah, you can have them in different, you know, without, without a redundant room area. Yeah, you have to have them so that they don't overlap. So by keeping those same rooms, I can do that. But if you're going to have to do um, different rooms and stuff, you're, you could end up with an error message because they can't overlap at all. So that can be a problem. Um, hosted elements can be added to a design option if the host is already part of the design option. So you can add a wall, but don't add a window. Then you can go back and add the window or door later. So if you accidentally just, OK, I know I, I need this stuff in there, but you didn't add the window or the door or something, you can go back and add it later. OK. This doesn't happen often. I've hit Q&A with 10 minutes left. Is there anyone that has any questions you would like to bring up about design options? Anyone bring up uh, something on what you would like to see at a later session of the Hints and Hacks? And you know why I do Hints and Hacks? Because tips and tricks are too blase. Everybody has tips and tricks. Yeah, you, you got to have your own niche. Um, don't be shy, anyone. Um... Can you show me how to fix an error when you need two layouts with rooms which need to overlap? Uh, I just told you it's not going to let you. It's uh, um, you, uh, it will not let you overlap the rooms. Um, I could try something. Oh, I always get in trouble when I try something. But but hey, <laughs> here we go. Um, let's undo this. Just so I have some. I put the options back. I, I no longer accepted primary. Um, I'm going to get myself in trouble. I just know it. But if we were to be in a design option for the primary um, and add, add a wall, this is going to be ugly, but we're trying some. Room tags outside the room. Uh, move to room. OK, fine. Uh, so now let me add another room, room here. Well, it let me add another room. And it's in this design option. Do, so does that mean if I add it while I'm in the design option, it's not going to matter? This is my junk room. I can't get to it. Um, so it let me have that. And it's set for primary even. So now if I go back to my model. Oh, because it was the main model and it changed the main model. So what about these others? It's in primary. It's not in main model. OK, that means I've got to try something else. Um, uh, the only thing I could think of doing is. If I'm in. primary again. Let me go back to this one. Let me try adding it up here because this this was already in the option set. Um, trying to recreate it is the problem. Um, uh, yeah, move it to the room. Um, okay. Give me a filter. I'm getting the room. I'm not getting the room. It's not letting me accept it because I'm in. OK, let me undo this. Let me go to one of the others. Let me get out of the one that's primary. Yeah, let's get out of there. Um, 
and we're in separate rooms. So let's go to separate rooms. Just trying to recreate it as a pain. Ah, wall. Um, Um, that's going to want me to do it the other way. Hmm. I can't interact with that room now and it's not cutting it. So if I were to try to add a room in here, Conflicts with, uh, yeah, resolve in main model. I, it won't let me do it in here. The other one, in the primary, it didn't bother it, but the primary is the one that interacts with the main model. But in here, it's not letting me do that. I think you would have to add this room and stuff to the um, design options to be able to do that. So let's go back to main model. And and let's grab that wall, that wall, and not let me grab that wall. That wall's already in there. Oh, it's because this is one that had the wall that was fixed. And if we shoot these over to Pain in the wazoo. Okay. Is there another insert in there that I need? I had to almost select it, so if it's not, okay, fine. Let me break that wall. Okay, we're gonna break that wall. Let's go get a uh, modify, a split, split this wall right there. And let's take these two. So now will it let me have that. We'll experiment over here, see if it gives us the same error now that that's been added. Protect your wall. Is it overlap because it's in the other option? This is in this option though. No, it's not. No, it's not. I forgot to set my options. Okay, now we're in switch rooms. Switch rooms, that's what I need to do, yeah. So now let's go get wall and put it in here. It didn't wanna break it out that time. I thought I had it added to it. Let's just make sure, main model. Nope, I didn't. There we go. Okay, by adding it to the, so there, we fixed it. Safe for trying that out on the fly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I ain't scared. <laughs> so yeah, by adding those two, that, that can keep you from having the overlap. So I'll go back here, so that wall's fine, uh, that room is fine. So yeah, it's, so it has to do exactly what it said. It can interact with a, it can overlap a room in the main model. So you have to move those rooms into your options. Whew. Okay, that was interesting. <laughs> I ain't scared. <laughs> um, anybody else? We got a couple more minutes. <laughs> I got claps for that. Yay, celebrations. It's it's a really strange one to figure out the whole problem. Yeah. Should be in that main model and what shouldn't. I was just <laughs> quickly checking the help and they, they do say that 
it, you need everything, they're pointing everything back to the main model, but that's not always the way you may want to do it. Yeah. So it's a, I think you got it to work. Um, yeah. But it depends on the circumstance. And I guess it depends on the process of what you put in at the very start. Yeah. You can always add things later. Yeah. Um, but it's one of it's. We'll put it down as a Revit thing. That's what I'd, I like yeah. to call it. It's just the way Revit does it. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for figuring that out. On sure. the slide. I'll, on the yeah. side of pressure as well, which is uh, even to be commended even more. Um, we have just under two minutes left, guys. So if there's any other questions, just. Uh... And remember, this conversation goes on. There's a place at the um, where you signed up. There's a place for comments and stuff at the bottom. Uh, feel free to go in there. If you like the conversation we've had today, go in and put a like on it uh, to help promote it. And. Uh, don't forget to sign up for the next one. Um, let's go back to my slides. Um, upcoming, um, the Revit Hints and Hacks next time will be uh, model what you, wait a minute, April, where's March? Uh, March isn't in here. The next one is on uh, phasing. That was a request. Um, so I had curtain wall request, I had design options and I had phasing. So I must have removed the March one out of here by accident, uh, but it's on phasing. And then we're coming up with model what you have to detail what you can. Uh, this one's going to be geared a lot toward families. Um, because I, oh, I'll show some horror stories in there. Uh, and what, what, if you would, would like to suggest something, please feel free to do so in the chat or in the um, question and answers, or even in the comment section uh, on the page where you sign up for the, uh, the webinar there. So um, I appreciate you guys sticking with me and I'll turn it back over to you, Jonathan. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, a huge thank you to, to you to taking the time, uh, the effort. I know there's a lot of background stuff goes into the preparation <laughs> to deliver these sessions, the courage to do it as well, and then uh, do stuff even live. So thank you very much for giving your time to community. Thank you, um, everyone, for joining us. Um, do we have another slide, I think? Maybe yes. next. So um, just to make you aware that um, anyone can become a speaker here on these conversations. Um, you know, so anyone that has knowledge and expertise to share, please feel free, reach out. Anyone in the community to share on the topics that are, are passionate and close to your heart. Visit the, um, the page. We've got a very easy submittal process. Submit your idea. We'll sit down. We'll work with you in the background to get you prepped and ready. Um, and we'd love to hear um, from all of you guys on different things and also reach out on sessions that you'd like to see, um, that you'd like to yes. need to cover. And there is no issues there. So anyone, please, please, please get involved. The more conversations um, we have in and around the community, the more we can share our knowledge and our passion. Um, do we have another slide? Um, and then with the community, it's not just conversations. There are loads of things that you can get involved with. So you've got the community forums, which are sort of the bedrock of, of our community. And we've been there for, for years and years where you can contribute, ask questions, share. You've got all the different community groups, connect with all your different peers. We've got our community voices, which I've been a previous author on. Danae is quite a big author there. So you've got workflows stories just get on the voices uh, contribute there we've got the journal for blogs and news we've got the student group hub where all the younger guys are hanging out and uh, as Donia said don't miss us on the next conversation and then you've got all the social Oops. media stuff don't be afraid to follow us twitter facebook LinkedIn, all our different groups um so yeah we're all in the community so yeah that's pretty much us thank you very much thank you Donia, for doing the session and we'll catch you all on the next one. And I will leave the last word to you, Danae. Okay. I think everybody ought to come back and invite your friends for nothing else because you got two great accents going on here. Yeah. Between his and mine. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I really do look forward to these. And I really am looking for new topics. Um, I'd like to give you what you want instead of me you know, pulling something out of my ear sometimes. Because if there's something you really need to have some more understanding about, um, I know that I got a lot of great feedback over the uh, curtain wall and that... Um, People were really just loving that stuff. And I did some follow-up with some blogs there too. So uh, don't forget to check out the uh, Community Voices, uh, which is the blog area too. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.